is a god of everything everything belongs to him even we we belong to him today i want to help you with your questions that you're battling in your mind you would be saying if everything belongs to god if i belong to god then why are going through these problems why am i having these problems why is this happening to me you know the same thing i want to let you know from the scriptures how is our god who controls and helps us not control us but uh, he controls everything that goes on around us to make things fit in our lives in first kings chapter 20 verse 23 here we see the enemy wants to come and attack god's people the assyrian people if you see king aram the the verse 23 talks about now the servants of king of aram said to him israel is a god of hills that is why they were stronger than we but let us fight them in the plain and surely we will be stronger than they see here the assyrians were thinking israelites are all in the hills and they are they know the territory they know how to fight in the hills and we all live in plain lands and different kinds of geography but uh, they thought you know because they are on the hills they know everything and we should somehow bring them and fight them in a plain land but they did not know that god was with israel god said that i will never leave you never forsake you those who curse you i will curse them those who bless you i will bless them that's the blessings of abraham the covenant of abraham abrahamic covenant in genesis you know we see uh, 13 14 15 16 chapters how god called abraham and blessed him so here the assyrian uh, people the advisers the wise men the soldiers or whoever is giving this advice to the king saying let us go a king see that you know we will bring them down to the plain land and uh, then we will be strong and then you know we can just get them and uh, attack them and we will be victorious obviously we see when we read down it was a bad bad stupid idea in this story because we see that the syrian wise men the syrian people the syrian whoever was trying to advise a king they were defeated they thought that god of israel was only in the hills you know not of the valleys yes brothers we also you know we we go to so many hills and mountains and rocks and climb so many different places so many pilgrims we go to pilgrimages and uh, uh, we go to different uh, places where people think you know god is here god is there and if we go we climb up these heavy big uh, mountains and god will bless me because he will see my sacrifice he will see me and all those kind of thoughts that people have especially in our country in india people have so many uh, ways that they think they want to please god they want to please god in all of their ways and they think you know whoever says you know if you go there god is there god will answer and then they go tie or tie some things and this and that threads and they give all kinds of sacrifices and this is what was happening here we always think assyrians were thinking god is not with them when they leave that hill that mountain so yes that's what they thought but uh, here we see that god is not just the god of mountains hills but even valleys you know mountains here represent good times mountains you know high high place on the top of the mountains uh, uh, it, it represents in the bible as good times and the valleys you know the bible talks about the great uh, psalmist uh, king david he talks about psalm 23 the shepherd even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death valleys represent bad times mountains represent good times so the assyrian people thought you know these guys are all on the mountain so they were always having a gala time and enjoying their time and uh, you know we have to bring them down so that they can uh, be attacked and we can uh, overpower them some people some of us have that idea that god is with us in our good times are you thinking that you know god is always there in my good times 
And when I'm going through bad times, you think I'm in the valley. How come I am not able to see God, not able to feel God? Yes. And God has left us helpless. I'm going through this valley season, troubled season. And uh, most of the times, you know, we are the ones who make our own troubles and valleys. And we blame God for that. And we think, you know, God is with us. Why did God leave me? But brothers, God is a God of mountain experience. God is a God of valley. He is there with you in the valley, in the shadow of death, in the problems, in, in your uh, life, hard life pressing uh, problems and situations. We are the ones we go through the valley is because number one is our own problems, our own mistakes, our own choices, not obeying God. Number two is, you know, the enemy is real. The devil is real. So Jesus said, you know, the persecution, if you believe me, you go through persecution. So these are the two things that happen. One is our own mistakes and that we go through valley. Another thing is the enemy attacks us and uh, takes, you know, we feel like we are going through the valley. But whatever, whether it's your mistake or the enemy wants to attack you, God is saying, even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, all over the world there is death going on. I mean, people are crying, people are dying, people are in problems and uh, uncertainty, no answers. All that is going on right now in the world. But God is saying, I am with you. I am the God, the good experience. I am the God of with you in the valley. Yes, God of mountains and uh, wellness, you know, of blessing, of prosperity, of peace. God wants to help us. God wants to lead us and guide us in all our ways. Jesus, if you see, you know, God as the son of man, he came down. God, the son, Jesus, in the form of Jesus, he came down, laid aside his glory. Can you imagine you know, a person who's leaving all the luxuries, all the great things that they have enjoyed. And a small illustration I would like to give you. A person coming from a different country, uh, a Western country, a developed country, coming to a third world country. They cannot survive. They cannot live unless the Lord gives the grace for them to live here. The Lord has called me, you know, I've left uh, the Western country, I left the US, I've been, our whole family left America and came to India and it's been now 20 plus years we are living here with the whole family and my children study in the same place and uh, we, we, we are experiencing the power and the grace of God. But in these 20 years, I've seen a lot of people because they saw us, they thought they would also come and be here and enjoy life and do ministry and all. But brothers, I've had people come for, you know, one month, left, come for six months, left, come for life term. In two days, they left, two, three days, they left. But Jesus, can you imagine? People from coming from different countries cannot adjust and live in this country from a different country. How love, how much of love that Jesus showed by leaving heaven. People say America is heaven on earth, but no brothers. If people come here, you know, in, to India and uh, imagine how heaven would be. Jesus left heaven. God became a human being. He laid aside his crown. He said, I'm going to leave my glory, my royal majesty, and I'm going to step into a human body. The God who created everything, everything belongs to him. The rocks, the hills, the mountains, the galaxies, the oceans, the, I mean, you name it. Everything, the stars and the moon and everything belongs to him. He is the king and the king of kings. And he says to save you, because you are going through a valley, you are going through problems, you are going through sin, that sin is taking you to hell. I am the solution. 
I'm going to come. So he left, he took that crown, left it and said, I'm going to enter into a human body, the huge God that cannot be compared, the eternity to eternity God became, contained himself, you know, and got into a womb and became a baby. And why? The only purpose is to die. He laid aside the crown and for the crown, he exchanged it for the cross. He knew why he was coming. He knew what was his purpose so that our sins he could take on himself and that who exchange he could give us the crown, his glory, his honor, righteousness. Yes, brothers and sisters, that is why Jesus came. Jesus doesn't want us to suffer. Yes, because life is like this. Life, we go through life. There are sufferings. There are good times. There are bad times. There is an evil that is there from the beginning that wants to hinder, that wants to come against God's purposes, God's people, God's children. That is why there is evil in the world, not because God is punishing you, not because God is taking you through the circumstances. I want to encourage you today, you know, the grace of God. You don't deserve it. If people coming from America or London cannot live here for two days, Jesus left heaven. 33 and a half years he was on this earth. Imagine God, how much he had to go through. And that grace, that grace he has exchanged, he has given. He said, you don't deserve it. You can't earn you know, what I have done. You cannot do it. Even if you do it because of the sinful nature, it is not acceptable. So God came down, gave his grace. And he said, this is the grace coming down and giving that grace in your valley. Are you in the valley today? God is saying, whatever you're going through, doesn't matter. I am there in the valley, in the shadow of the valley, caring for you, holding your hand. The world is all helter-skelter. But God is saying, no, I am with you. I will never leave you, never forsake you. Victory is already, you know, God has given it to you. If you see that Syrian army, they were thinking, you know, let's do this and let's do that. And they were all planning all those things. But because God was with Israel, no plan of the enemy, no plan of any kind of sickness, disease, or any kind of oppression, depression, or attacks, God has given you victory. Where victory is there, there is no defeat. God is always helping you, leading you, guiding you, and uh, taking you to a place where you are always blessed. We need to understand that we are in a blessed place. We are seated with the, in the high places with Jesus. When you are with Jesus, you're always victorious. Yeah, even, even in the valley, God is with you. When God is with you, nothing can separate you with the love of God. When God is with you, there is no defeat. When God is with you, there is no plan of the enemy come against you. Yes. No weapon, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. That is the plan of God. God is saying that, you know, the Israelites, the Assyrians, they were trying to do so many, uh, creating all, many, all plots against the uh, Israelites. But because the Israelites remembered the promise, the covenant of God, they have taken the, the words of God. And today God is saying, I am with you. And I will never leave you, never forsake you. I will be always in, in, in the time of victory, in the time of defeat, in the time of you going through sickness. You may be having some kind of sickness. You may be having, uh, you know, problems with your job. Or maybe your boss might have removed you from the job. I mean, right now the economy is gone so bad and you may not have a job right now. But God is saying that I am with you 
and I will lead you, I will guide you, I will direct you. No valley experience, the oppression kind of experience, the depression kind of experience will touch you because the God of Abraham, the God of Abraham is blessing. The covenant of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham is only blessing. There is no curse in the blessing of Abraham. Jesus came down, if you see in Galatians 3, 13, 14, 15, when you read that, Jesus exchanged his blood and the crown for our sins, for our curse. That is what Jesus did on the cross. Brothers and sisters, this wonderful experience, whatever people tell you, you know, because of your mistake, because of whose ever mistake, if you're going through a bad time, God is with you. He's not deserted you. You might not be seeing it. Your body, your physical body may not be seeing it. But God is with you. No enemy plan will work. No evil work against you. Let me pray for you, for your, especially for your healing. A lot of people I sense, they have that fear in them of their sickness or some sickness is going to come or some kind of virus will come and atta attack you. You are having bad dreams of all this. I want to pray a special prayer for you. If you've been listening to this, if you've been hearing this, seeing this, receive it. I'm going to release the power of the Holy Spirit that is present through this audio, through this video, the Lord is going to touch you. Okay? Put your hands, open your hands, and God is going to touch you. The Holy Spirit is going to come and touch you in your room where you are. Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to come exchange your crown, majesty, glory to our sin, to our shame, to our curse. Lord, we thank you that by your blood, we are cleansed, washed, purified, righteous. Mountain experiences, valley experiences, you are still with us. You would never leave us, never forsake us. Especially, Lord, I pray for these, your beloved children that are suffering with fear, with sickness, with bad dreams, with depression. A lot of them taking a lot of pills, but nothing is helping them. I rebuke that spirit, spirit of sickness. I rebuke that. I curse it in the name, in the blood of Jesus. Jesus cursed the fig tree and the fig tree died from the roots. I curse that heaviness, that sickness, that infirmity be gone in Jesus' name. Father, I release your healing power through this audio, video, wherever people are watching. Supernatural power penetrate into their lives, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. By faith, we receive it. Receive your healing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, I've, this is a powerful prayer. Don't lose your healing. God has healed you. Receive it. Don't worry about the enemy's thoughts. Break it in Jesus' name. And write to me. Tell me. I would love to listen from you. Write and connect to us on the WhatsApp network, Facebook, email, whatever form you can. Connect with us. We have prayers every day for all the people that send us requests. People are praying for you. And we are all praying for you. And we would love to listen to your testimonies. If you have any testimony, you want to share your prayer request, write to us, connect with us. God bless you. God is a God of the mountain. God is a God of the valley. Wherever you go, God is with you. God bless you.